Imagine you're walking through a dense forest, miles away from civilization. You've gotten separated from your friends and comrades, and the sun is beginning to set. Suddenly, you hear the rustling of leaves in the distance. You think it might be one of your friends, but when you call out, there's no response. Then, you hear a stick break behind you. You quicken your pace, hoping to find someone, anyone. But no matter how far you run, you can't seem to find anyone. The sounds of leaves rustling, sticks breaking, and now strange growling gets closer and closer. Suddenly, right as you can't stand the fear anymore, the beast jumps out and... The DM ends up rolling a 1, causing the werewolf he's been building up for over two sessions to stumble and faceplant into a tree trunk. This scenario is a common occurrence in the popular tabletop game Dungeons & Dragons, one of the most popular and well-played tabletop games out there. However, not many people get to experience or even know about the sometimes comical nature of this tabletop game. Despite Dungeons & Dragons or D&D being around since the 1970s, there still exists a common stereotype that D&D is just a simple game that 20-something year old neckbeards that still live in their mother's basement play to avoid socializing with other people. However, that description couldn't be any farther from the truth. D&D actually has an incredibly rich history that spans centuries with numerous different high and low points. In addition, D&D has transcended more than just a mere game, actually becoming the basis and influence for many different media forms in the fantasy genre today. So, please join me as I explain how a simple tabletop game ended up becoming one of the most influential tabletop role-playing game experiences out there. The story of D&D actually starts centuries ago, all the way back in the late 1700s. During this time, the Prussian military had developed a unique way to train young military officers, a tabletop simulation called War Game. The game was designed to simulate military battles under different varying conditions, with opposing officers positioning figurines around a map or play field to represent troops and units. Each officer would also roll dice to determine the outcome of different orders to simulate the random nature of war. War games stayed as a military training tool until the 1800s when famed sci-fi writer H.G. Wells wrote a simplified rule set, opening the game up to a wider audience across the world. In addition, this allowed for more modules or different ways to play to pop up, allowing for all eras of warfare to be included within Wargame. Fast forward to the 1970s and two individuals, Gary Gynax and Dave Arneson. Gynax and Arneson were both fans of Wargame and tended to focus on medieval scenarios whenever they played. However, they also had a bit of a unique way to play the game. Instead of playing as generals, ordering around troops and units, they would focus on individual characters and their own backstories, statistics, etc. As their fascination with medieval combat and character building grew, as well as the popularity of their war game sessions, Gynax and Arson collaborated with each other, and in 1974, they came up with their own unique rule set, first published as Dungeons and Dragons in a series of three books. The game was an immediate hit and by the end of the year all 1,000 hand printed and published game sets had sold out. The game was so popular that Gynax and Arneson's company TSR Hobbies Incorporated 
formerly known as tactical studies rules, were barely able to keep up with demand. In addition to the basic game set, the company also proceeded to publish new supplementary books and modules, adding new classes, monsters, realms, and even pre-made adventurers. As the sales for D&D continued to skyrocket, the game began to gain some mainstream popularity and recognition, including appearing in Steven Spielberg's blockbuster E.T. Unfortunately, with this popularity came controversy. In 1979, 16-year-old college student James Dallas Egbert III went missing from the Michigan State University campus. A detective hired by Egbert's family eventually, but incorrectly, surmised that Egbert died in a real-life version of Dungeons and Dragons played in the steam tunnels underneath the campus, despite not knowing anything about Dungeons and Dragons prior to the investigation. While this theory was eventually disproven, Egbert unfortunately committed suicide due to clinical depression, this did not stop fundamentalist Christian groups and parent groups from petitioning to ban the game. The controversy even resulted in a movie based after the Egbert incident called Tom Mazes Hanks and, and Monsters, get caught up in a starring of a young Tom the Hanks. Maze until they take it too far. I propose we play Mazes and Monsters in a real setting. It won't be a fantasy. Too bad for one of them because now there's no turning back. There was also a comic called Dark Dungeon, which was eventually adapted into a movie, which featured two college girls being led into satanic worship by simply playing Dungeons and Dragons and ended with the Dungeons and Dragons players going straight to hell. In addition to these controversies, the second edition of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons removed all mentions of demons and devils, although they are now included in modern versions of the game. In 1997, TSR Incorporated was purchased by Wizards of the Coast, a subsidiary of Hasbro. From this point onward, Wizards proceeded to create and publish all future editions and modules of Dungeons and Dragons, including 3rd edition, 3.5, 4th edition, and most recently, 5th edition in 2014. Clearly, D&D's history spans across centuries of development, controversy, and refinement, but some may ask, how does that make it special? There are dozens of games out there, such as Checkers, that have been played for much longer than D&D. How is D&D separate from those? Well, I admit that this is true, Dungeons and Dragon itself has become much more than a simple table talking. In fact, it has gone to influence so many different areas within the fantasy genre itself. For starters, many other popular tabletop games were inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. Pathfinder, for example, is based after older rule sets of Dungeons and Dragons. Other games, such as Call of Cthulhu, Mutants and Masterminds, Vampire of the Masquerade, and Shadowrun have all been inspired by Dungeons and Dragons in one way or another, from setting, to creatures, to story development, to even how stats and character sheets are handled. Speaking of monsters, many monsters from D&D come from different cultures, myths, and legends across the world, creating an interesting cultural exchange within the game itself. Beings such as chimeras, centaurs, cyclopses, minotaurs, succubi, and golems are all common monsters found in Dungeons and Dragons. In addition to being some fun enemies to fight, all these various creatures expose players to new myths and legends from cultures all across the world, possibly influencing them to research them more in a later date. Another huge area D&D has influenced is video games, specifically role-playing video games or RPGs. Ever since the early days of Final Fantasy, RPGs have used classes, stats, and storytelling styles all found in Dungeons and Dragons. Even modern games today still take inspiration from Dungeons and Dragons. World of Warcraft, for example, 
uses many classes found in Dungeons & Dragons, such as druids, monks, rogues, and fighters. Skyrim offers an open world adventure for players, allowing them to explore an amazing fantasy based world at their own pace, taking on what quests they want, going where they want to go, and act how they want to act. Even games like Persona 5, which was developed in Japan, uses a similar stat style set by Dungeons and Dragons. Heck, the whole thing has come full circle, as there are now Dungeons and Dragons video games, such as Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights. However, the biggest influence that D&D has probably had is on the creativity of its players. Dungeons and Dragons provides such a wide open experience that anyone can come up with their own adventure or character. Just listen to these players. Um, I love the role-playing aspect. I like getting into my character, thinking about what my character would do. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I never did theater as a kid or like in high school or anything, but it's always something I've thought was really cool, and so I like the almost acting aspect of D&D and getting to act my own character. Favorite aspect? Um... I think it just has to be how open-ended it is. Like, with a lot of other things, like video games and whatnot, you can only go so far with creativity. But with Dungeons & Dragons, it's it's just about infinite. You can go as far as you want, as creative as you want. It's endless. It's a lot of fun. Favorite aspect. Ugh. I mean, I really like the, the, like, the mechanical part of, like, playing the character and fighting and rolling dice. Um, but honestly, I think my favorite part is the, the role playing, um, getting to interact with people. It's kind of like a like an improv skit, you're, um, but you have more structure. You're cooperatively working together to tell a story. And getting into character and telling a story for me is um, just as, and maybe is a little slightly more important than the rolling dice to see how much damage you deal. The only thing limiting Dungeons & Dragons is your imagination. You can go on an adventure with friends questing to find an ancient artifact lost in an abandoned city. You can even go against the mold, coming up with your own character races, classes, and even mechanics. You can even come up with a lighthearted or even comedic campaign such as chasing after a squirrel who stole your breakfast. While Dungeons & Dragons may not be for everyone, there's no denying the extensive history behind it, as well as what it has gone on to influence in the fantasy genre itself. So, if this sounds up your alley, go gather some friends, grab some dice, roll up a character sheet, and delve the amazing world of Dungeons and Dragons.